going on you guys? Look what you see here. Today's video, I want to talk to you about the pros and cons of printing your helmets right side up versus upside down. Let's check it out. All right, so this has been a video that I have been meaning to make and actually have made probably three, four, five iterations of this and I've just not really liked any of them. So I'm making an effort here to get this video out. You probably saw me talk about this when I made my M'Baku mask, which if you haven't watched, you really should check it out. I think it's gonna be in one of these corners up here. I'll link to it, you definitely check that out. But that was really the first time that I've gone off and printed a helmet right side up using custom supports. It's not just the custom supports that you can do within Simplify 3D, but it's sort of taking that to the next level with an internal support structure that you then place your supports on top of. Now, before I really jump into all of this, I should preface that this is really specific to Simplify 3D Slicer users. I don't know if you can do this in Cura. I don't really use Cura or any other software. I really just stick to Simplify 3D. This is a method I saw someone share over on the 3D printed armor and weapons props Facebook group, which if you haven't already, I'll have links down below. Nico runs that show and it's an absolutely awesome Facebook group of just really talented people printing some ridiculously cool cosplay things like helmets and armor and all sorts of crazy stuff. So check that out. Now, upside down is typically the method that I have used up until, you know, just recently, where you print a helmet upside down. This minimizes the amount of supports you're going to need. It minimizes the amount of filament that you're going to use uh, and the amount of time that it's going to take to print the actual file. That all sounds absolutely awesome. What's not awesome about that is the end result of you having to clean the top portion of your print. This is typically the like the helmet or the mask or whatever it may be. Uh, you end up having to do a lot of filling and sanding and post-processing work to get that smoothed out. So here was a test print. It wasn't really intended to be a test print, but ended up being a test print of the M'Baku mask. Uh, what? So how this ends up working is you're gonna position your mask or helmet or whatever it is that you're looking to print vertically like you would intend on wearing it and then start applying supports. Then what you're gonna end up doing is applying an internal structure using a second process and making sure that that structure ends up being completely hollow. So what I ended up doing is basically creating this in Mesh Mixer and I'll be sharing some of the internal support structures that I've made over on Thingiverse where you can go and download them, use them, manipulate them. It's pretty easy to do. And at the end of this video, I'll walk through the technical portions of how to actually set this up. But once you have the internal structure in place, that's when you're gonna go and then lay down manually some additional supports on the underside here and what should happen is when you go to slice this, the supports that were on top of the actual internal structure here will, because you're using two different processes, the supports will only appear on the top. So this whole piece prints completely hollow versus a huge support structure that's going to take a ton of time to print as well as use up a lot of filament. So here's the Black Panther mask that I have not finished. I didn't want to do anything with this until I did this video with you guys. It's just another example of how I used the same method where you can see it actually all connected. So this is all hollow. It's the internal structure. And then on top is the only place that I have the supports placed. Then on the inside, I also have some supports. I could have probably done another smaller internal structure within that. And then there's support structures in the eyes and in the mouth. But if I would have printed this upside down like I normally would have, this would have been near impossible for me to recreate or sculpt out or really smooth out so it looked like one completed prop versus taking and printing it like this in this orientation. So by the way, this is all personal preference, my opinion alone here, but for me, this method of printing vertically is gonna get me better print results when I'm printing a helmet. Is it gonna save me on material? No. Is it gonna save me on print time? Definitely not. This is gonna take a good amount longer to print than if you were gonna print it upside down. But where it's saving me is the post-processing, which typically takes the most time. I will gladly let this print for two days, three days, four days, 
five days if I have to and just let my printer run and do its thing so that I don't have to stand there in my workshop in sand for a half a day or try and re-sculpt out some of the details that were screwed up because that's where the attachments or the supports had attached to the actual printed piece. Hey, by the way, there is also another alternative to this, which is just using supports around the perimeter of your prints. Nico Industries actually has a really great video on how to do this. And then you can also just use one little support structure on the inside. Uh, it's all personal preference again. I like this method with the internal larger supports, but you can certainly go for this other option that has just supports around the perimeter, save you on print time and a little bit of material. I'll have links down below for that video. So good, all completely personal preference. I just wanted to share this with you guys. And if you wanna hang tight here, I'll go through the technical details, but I just wanted to quickly run you through this process of how you can do this. And if you wanna sit in and check it out, you can stay tuned here. But if you haven't, or if you don't want to, thanks for watching. Uh, make sure to subscribe, all that crazy stuff. Let me know some comments down below. I've got some more props on the way that I'm working on. And uh, yeah, I will talk to you guys soon. And if not, hang tight here, cause we're about to switch this over to my computer and we will check out the actual process of building the internal structures and applying the supports. Woo! Can you tell I'm excited? All right, so you guys ready to have your minds blown? So the first thing I'm gonna do is bring my file into MeshMixer. MeshMixer is a free software that you can download and use. Uh, then you're gonna go under the edit and transform function here to align the print, how you'd actually want to print it. Then you can come under edit align and it will actually uh, align it to the build surface. Next, we're gonna build the internal structure that we're gonna use for the support process here. So I went under mesh mix, selected a sphere, and now I'm beginning to edit this to try and shape it as best I can on the inside of the helmet without actually contacting any of the walls. And then we'll just continue to fidget with this until I'm pretty happy with the overall shape. And I do want to stick with sort of a spherical rounded top for this internal structure. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to go under edit and then plane cut and then basically slice that in half. Then I will use the select tool here to select the underside of that sphere. I'm sure there's a much easier way to do this, but uh, it's not entirely accurate. So I'm just going to select all the bottom as best I can and then come under the edit extrude function. And then what that's gonna do is extend that base much lower. So I'm gonna wanna drop that down well beyond the print bed. It'd give me a little bit of wiggle room to play with later on as well when I adjust the files manually. So then I'm gonna use the plane cut tool again and then slice off the front half and the back half as needed uh, so that nothing is again interfering with the inside of the support structure and the helmet and the backside of the print structure as well just so that there's not really any excessive amount of structure that's printing behind the helmet and once i'm done with that i'm going to export this out as an stl and bring it into simplify 3d once in simplify 3d i'm going to rearrange everything again here and make sure everything's aligned nice and properly the one thing that you'll notice as well is that, again, my support structure is a little long, so I'll drop that below the bed. Again, gives me a little bit of wiggle room to play with, so I'll try and realign these as best as possible. I notice here that there is a little bit of, uh, the support structure is interacting with the inside of the mask here, so I'm gonna use the, uh, I'm gonna unselect the uniform scaling function, and now I can start manually tweaking the settings there. And again, I can raise this up and lower it as needed so that it's just barely coming close to touching the inside of the helmet. Once that's done, I'm gonna duplicate my processes here within Simplify 3D. Uh, you can also relabel those as needed. Uh, and then once you wanna come in, once you have those updated, you'll also want to identify the models for each of those profiles so that they're individual across each. So here I'm gonna go under the support structure model and adjust the settings. And I'm gonna change it from 0.2 millimeter layer height to 0.3 since I don't need it to be anything super uh, fine detailed. And then all the perimeter walls too. And the most critical here is the infill is set at zero because I don't want any infill on this inside structure. Once that's done, I can use my uh, Simplify 3 custom support settings here. I'm gonna auto generate those and then start removing supports as needed or adding supports as needed. Here I'm removing some of the excess ones on the outside and it's gonna print nice and good. So once that's done, I can actually slice this so I can prepare print. 
select both profiles. So I'll select all, okay, and it's gonna do its thing. And now here is my print profile. And as you see there, and now you can see that it's nice and hollow on the inside of that support structure, and there are supports on top of it. Pretty darn nice. Here's some other options as well, printing it upside down with supports, typically how I do things, but again, it's gonna screw up the top side of that helmet there for me to actually clean up. And here's one planning it flat. Uh, lots of supports on the inside. This is also a viable option, but the ringing effect that you get when printing flat is just something I did not want to do for this project. And again, I prefer printing my helmets upside down or vertically almost all of the time. So again, thanks to the folks over on the three printed armor and props Facebook group. Uh, again, saw this there originally, and then am sharing it now with you guys. So props to those guys for figuring this out, and hopefully it's helpful for some of you out there. Uh, this was a much longer-winded video, video than I really wanted this to be, but again, thanks for hanging in there and checking this out. Uh, please share with me any of these prints that you guys do. I would love to see what you guys are working on with this. Uh, again, I think this is just a really cool method to print this up right side up versus upside down.